Who was the oldest man that ever lived? Oh, no. No. He was not? Nope. Who was the oldest man who ever lived? Let me put it like this. Methuselah was the oldest man that ever died. Yeah, it was it was Enoch taken in the oh, and never saw death. Never saw death. That's right. So he's still alive. You know, and when we do this Bible study right now, like I said, this is for somebody who studied for a while. You've been in church. Most of this stuff is basic. But when we start getting into these seals, for instance, um, since since you're on here now, you read the sixth seal and the heavens departed the scroll. And the islands and mountains were moved out of their place and the sun became black as sackcloth and all that stuff like that. What's happening there? Um, okay, you said when the mountains are being moved and... Revelation 6. Mm -hmm. the, and the, the stars of the heaven fell to the earth and then the, the sky became dark, blackened as sackcloth and the moon turned blood red. The heavens departed as the scroll. Mountains and, and islands were moved out of their place. Every man. Go ahead. I'm sorry. These are all signs of the end of the age. Um, if you look at Matthew 24, where it talks about the signs of the end, we will realize that the things that move mountains are usually earthquakes. Yeah. Hey, you know what? There's a verse in the Bible that says, it's in Revelation 10, it says, prophesy again. Because one of the things that you just mentioned was that they've already occurred. And to a certain extent, they have, but they really haven't. Not when you look at what Revelation 6 is, is saying. And it also talks about when the heaven, the sky recedes like a scroll. Um, all my life, I've always heard and been taught that that was the second coming of Christ. And they looked at him and said, Fall at rock, ran to the rocks and the mountains and cried on the rocks and the mountains to hide them, hide us from him who sits on the throne and from the face of the Lamb. And uh, that, that sixth seal, this is what made me really study Revelation more, and it's probably going to shake up a lot of our friends from my church, but I can't believe that that's the second coming when you read it and see what's going on there and what's happening. Hey, that's going to make you okay. go. Revelation 6. Okay. I wasn't going to jump there, but this is introductory stuff, but I know that you're kind of familiar with most of the stuff we're talking about now. But, uh, hmm? Revelation 6, look at, uh, look at verse, uh, this is a traditional teaching that we've had in our church for a long time. Revelation 6, uh, 12. I'm going to jump there since, uh -huh. since you're on there. It says, I watched, you read it. Uh, well, you know, I'm in the King James Version. That's fine. Okay, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars um, in the... I'm reading on, okay. Yeah. Yeah, 
I've been studying this thing for so long, and I've heard so many people say it, and uh, they say that this is the second coming of Christ. No, I can't believe I can't believe it. And see, I'm glad you have the King James Bible because it says for the great day of his wrath in the King James, the uh, new NIV says, the NIV says for the great day of their wrath. The, the Greek says that the uh, word for his and their in the Greek is exactly the same thing. It can be uh, second person singular, his, or third person plural, their. If it's second... If it's second person uh, singular, it's pointing back to the lamb. If it's third person plural, it's pointing back to the men that this was described, the seven categories of men, of mankind that was just described. Well, and actually, you know, in the King James, we were taught that when the age of Satan comes, that the Watch this. This this hit me too. I was in a in a Revelation seminar one day, and I'm getting off the stuff that I was covering because you kind of familiar with that. And I'm gonna send you the study guide. You can look at that. But this is what why I feel like studying Revelation is so critical because we need to take a second look at this thing. Um, how it says the stars of the the stars in the sky fell to the earth. How big is a star? How could they? We, Go ahead. We have one of the smallest stars. The Earth has one of the smallest stars in the universe, and our star is the sun. Now, now let's just think about this. The Bible says, "And the stars in the sky fell to the earth." Yeah. How can that happen? Yeah. How can that happen? How can the stars fall to the earth when the stars are bigger than the earth? That's, that's just one thing. Now, here's, I don't know if you heard earlier what I was saying is, um, if you look in Revelation, uh, uh, look at the first verse, Revelation 1, first verse. This is critical mm -hmm. to understanding this. Um, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to do what? To show the servants things which were shortened to come to pass. How did he deliver it to the servants? How did he, yeah, he showed it to them so they would see it? Oh. And then it goes on and says he made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testified to what? Verse 2. Testimony of Jesus. Uh, verse 2. That means when Jesus was. No, not that part. Two of one, yeah, the, just, it says right after John, he, he, uh, by sending his angels to his servant John, who did what? Testifies to what? Is that what it says in King James? Oh, before. Go ahead and read it. King James says, Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and all that are written in the book of life. Now, what does that mean? Well, the book of life means the word of God. Okay, the word of God. Okay, that's, there it is right there. He told everything that he saw. Now, look at the problem. Yeah. You go back to Daniel chapter 12. Daniel was given a picture of the end of time. I think it's in chapter 12, verse, I don't remember, 8 or 9, something like that. Daniel was shown the end of time, and then, and then he was told, man, maybe we need to go back to that. Look at Daniel. I just want to make sure that I'm not making this up. Daniel chapter 12. Wow, there was a time I could find the book of Daniel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Daniel chapter 12. There it is. Verse um Okay, ver well, at that time Michael, I'm at verse 1. The great prince who protects your people. Verse yeah. The at that time okay. Michael, the great prince who protects your people will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is not found in the book, will be delivered. 
Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine uh, like the brightness of the heavens and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. I'm going to jump down to verse um, five. Then I, Daniel, looked and there stood before me two others. That's not what I'm looking for either. I want to see something else here. There it is. Verse nine. After he was, after he looked and he saw these things, what was, what, what happened? Verse nine. And Daniel said, go my way, for the words are closed up and sealed for the time of the end. The words were closed. When John looked down at the end of time, he saw some things happening and then was told, just like Daniel, to go and write what he saw. Daniel could or John could not explain to us what they saw because their words were locked up in their in the language of their time. He could not look down here and see a Mercedes Benz and say, there goes a Mercedes Benz. Yeah. Uh -huh. Until the time of the end. So John was trying to describe things that we see now near this time of the end, but he didn't have the language to explain it. Which explains why for so many years we've been studying and reading Revelation but really couldn't understand it for hundreds of years because the words and the things that John and Daniel saw weren't even invented. They couldn't describe it because the words were sealed up. Does that make sense? <laughs> when we start thinking about what we believe, you know, you know, we're from a church that's really high on prophecy. But if you ask most of the people that we've been around for years and years, they're going to recite to you the basic teachings that they've heard for years and years and years. Haven't thought about it. The stars of the sky shall fall to the earth. The Bible didn't say, we talked about 1833, there was a star shower, which was one of the signs that led William Miller, you know, to do what he did. And so, okay, that's fine. But prophetic things happen is twofold and sometimes threefold manifestations of it. So that blessed them to be able to take them to the place where they were at that time. But the Bible didn't say, you know, we, they saw, they had a star shower. When you go back and you look at 1833, those stars fell through the sky. The Bible didn't say that the stars fell through the sky. It clearly says, and the stars of the sky did what? They fell to the earth, not through the sky. Hmm, watch this. As you keep reading, um, it says, the stars that fell to the sky like late figs dropped from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. Now here's where we go back and start looking at some simple, go ahead and ask the question. Yes, uh, you, you are in Revelation 1 again. I'm in chapter 6. I, I left Re Revelation 1. I know you know a lot okay. about that. So I, 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 I'm... Yeah, I'm getting right to some of the okay. stuff that makes us that makes you say, wait a minute, I need to go back and study this. Not the stuff, you know, you already know about a lot of the basic stuff that we were just covering. I was just going over that for other people right. who might have been tuned in. But I'm getting right to the meat of why this needs to be studied again, taking a second look at. Okay. Then it says that these, the stars fell to the sky as late figs dropped from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. Wind is a symbol of war and strife. Um, have you ever heard of the in heaven where the sea, the sea of glass? You ever heard about that described? In, yeah, in Revelation. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's in, it's in, it's in when it starts talking about the new earth and it shows the sea of uh, the, the sea looking like glass. It's not glass. It's not glass. No, it's not. Do you know why it looks like glass? Because what what causes waves? Wind. Wind causes waves. Wind, and this is a Jewish city that we're looking at. Wind from the Jewish mindset is a symbol of war and strife. 
In heaven, there's no war and no strife. So when you see this Jewish picture of heaven, the sea has nothing to cause waves. So it looks like it's glass, but it's not. There's just no strife there. The trees, if you look at ancient depictions of Jewish cities, they grow straight and perfect because there's no wind blowing on it to cause them to be crooked. There's no sin. Notice this thing says that these stars fell to the earth as a wind was pushing against it and casting them to the earth. Throwing them to the earth. Now all the years that I studied this, I never really went back and thought about the star thing until uh, Pastor Best was here pre doing a, a seminar one day on Revelation. And he asked a question. I said, let me go back and study about these stars. I need to look at that. And then also the word cast. The word cast comes from the Greek word balo, B-A or beta, beta, alpha, uh, lambda, lambda, epsilon, not epsilon, omega, balo. The, uh, the English word for it was ballista. And what a ballista is, it was like a huge bow and arrow where they would put arrows on it and shoot rocks and all this stuff over to destroy some town. But ballista, what modern word do we have do you think that comes from ballista? Yeah, that's it. It's the root word for ballistic. I had to step way back. These stars were thrown. That's crazy. Huh? That's crazy. <laughs> what? When someone goes, when someone goes ballistic, they really go crazy. Yeah, but but you know what else they use with ballistic? You know what you don't you know what the ICBM is? Inter. What? An ICBM. No, what is an ICBM? Yeah, it's an intercontinental ballistic missile. Oh. And the stars in the sky fell to the earth as late figs dropped, not straight down, but as they were thrown to the earth. And the word used to throw it to the earth is ballistic. I mean, ballista. I was like, wow. That floored me. That floored me. Now John was looking at down here. I'm going to just straight up tell you. I believe what John saw were nuclear missiles. Now that sounds real radical. We've always talked about God doing these mystical things. And you know, but and when you go back and you read it says, For the great day of his wrath hath come. But in Revelation 6, what we just read, it said that the uh, hide is from the face of him who sits on the throne. Because the great day... In the NIV, of their wrath hath come. There are seven depictions of mankind, the kings, the rich men, the poor, seven. And you know what seven is a, is a number of perfection. All of mankind have become so upset. When you read it, it says, for the great day of their wrath hath come. We, watch, we are watching what's happening right now. We're seeing revelation fulfilled before our very eyes. The president of the United States and the Congress right now are negotiating a nuclear deal with Iran who's already told you that if they get the bomb they're going to blow up Israel for the great day of their wrath hath come and who can stand and, and Iran is right over there in the area that we kind of know is called Armageddon right in that same area you have terrorists now that if you think terrorists would get a bomb do you think they'd blow one up in New York Would if they had a nuclear bomb. Uh, Children are now watching television and blowing up worlds and flying through space. It's nothing. They play these games. It's nothing. It's common knowledge. Man gets in a space shuttle and blasts off from the earth. We don't even pay attention to it now. When you read Revelation 18, Revelation says, give her back double portion of her grief as she's given to other nations. Um, Ronald Reagan's system for fighting and defending America was called Star Wars. America is not building space shuttles and flying into the sky so they can see if they can grow better plants. There are military missions going on continuously in space. If you read Revelation 18, which we're going to get to, it says, for her sins have reached the heavens. 
So let's keep reading here. And then it says, the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, and the mighty. Oh, let me go back to the sky receding as a scroll. You know what happens when a nuclear bomb goes off. What does it look like? Rolling up. Right. And, and remember, John was trying to tell us what he saw. He could not. Hey, the Bible's right. I didn't say it. <laughs> Bible said it. When, hey, when, 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 you, when you go to Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2, I went and did a little study on this and I had to look it up. It says that there would be pillars of smoke and fire at the end of time and all this stuff like that. Joel 2, 28, I think it is. I went back and I looked up the word where it talks about pillars of smoke and the word that it used to describe the pillars of smoke was a huge palm tree with long leaves that reached out and folded under. That's what they used to describe pillars of smoke. Same thing. Same thing. I live here in California now, so I see palm trees and I know exactly how they shape. Exactly. Um, and it's the same thing. Okay? That's in Joel. It also talks about, I mean, you, you quoted Matthew 24. Jesus said at the end of time, there would be something that would happen so terrible, it would never happen again. And unless those days be cut short, no flesh would survive. It didn't say anything about nuclear blasts and all that stuff destroying every human being. It would be worse to survive the nuclear blast and have to deal with the radiation and everything else afterwards. So John looks down here and he sees all this stuff happening. Then he sees, talks about the kings the earth, of the earth, the princes, the generals. He said they ran to the mountains and cried for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them. Um, I thought about this, went back and did a little more reading. I've been studying this for years. Yeah, it kept me in trouble in our church. <laughs> it kept me in trouble, you know. But I had to be, I had to be true to what I was studying. I just couldn't quote a catechism because you told me that, you know, most of what um, Adventists have been taught comes from Uriah Smith. Uriah Smith was the first Bible teacher at Battle Creek College. He taught all the ministers and it, with his book. And then all the ministers took his book and taught all the members. So now we're still reciting Uriah Smith um, theology of Daniel and Revelation. Fortunately, Revelation 10 says it's going to be sweet in your mouth but bitter in your belly. And it says prophesy again. Take a second look at this. See, we don't even have to talk about God right now and talk about these things happening. You don't even have to mention God. Man has the power to do this without even talking about God. Before, we couldn't even conceive of these ideas. Total destruction of the earth. Mass destruction like that. We couldn't even conceive of it. Then he goes on and says, uh, he says, cry for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them. They ran and hid in the mountains. I'm in Texas. You're in California. You have mountains. We don't. <laughs> We don't have them, but there's a, uh, the Tower of Babel was a temple. It was, a, it was what you call a ziggurat. You ever heard the term? Not cigarette, but ziggurat. You ever heard that? That was a temple, ancient pagan temple. Another name for a ziggurat, this huge building, was a, the mountain of God. The huge building was called the mountain of God. John looked down here and saw huge buildings. He would not have called them skyscrapers. He did not have a frame of reference. The biggest thing he saw was that ziggurat, those ancient temples, or people living in the side of caves in the mountains. And he saw mankind running into buildings, I believe. Now go back to the Gulf War. During the Gulf War, when Israel was afraid that Saddam Hussein was launching Scud missiles with, with, with poisonous gas, they reported that the Israelites would lock themselves up in their apartments and seal up the, the building 
so no air would get in. How long can you live like that? Not very long. Not very long at all. No, not very long. I would rather have been killed in the blast than be locked up in the room with a friend or relative or anybody else with nothing else to eat but them. Ran to the rocks and mountains. Hmm? I was just going to say, just to even suffocate oh. Right. Hey, look at Revelation 18. And I'm just going there because I already know, you know, our background in, in this, in this uh, prophecy. And uh, yeah. when we go back through the rest of it, when we start looking at these, the four horsemen, and all of that stuff, and, he, and when we start looking at that stuff, it's like, wait a minute, hold on now, this is this too much. <laughs> it's just too much here. It's too plain. Yeah. And remember, the, the Bible says that at the end of time, the Bible says knowledge will increase. It wasn't just talking about a secular knowledge. Our eyes are open now because we understand. We understand what Daniel was talking about and what John was seeing. You know, look at Revelation 18. It says, uh, after this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He had great authority and the earth was illuminated by a splendor. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a home for demons. Let me see. Go to Vegas. Go to Mardi Gras. Turn on your television and watch Walt Disney and the wizards and the ghosts and the cartoons and all that stuff. What's your sign? All that, all that stuff comes from, from astrology. All that stuff comes from demonology. She has become a, a home for demons and a haunt for every evil spirit. A haunt for every unclean and detestable bird. We just passed in America, and I agree that homosexuals have a right to be married. I agree because we're not a Christian country. We're a freedom of a religion country. So I can't argue with that. You know? But a home for every unclean and detestable bird, not the dove of the Holy Spirit. For all nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries, and the kings of the earth committed adultery with her. So this looks to be a great nation. Babylon was a great nation. The merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins so that you will not receive any of her plagues. What's verse 5 say? For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquity. Keep reading. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her work, in the cup which she has filled still to her double. In the same... How much she it, has in the same okay. cup, give her back what she gave everybody else. Give her back what she gave everybody else. In the same cup. And give it back double. Double. Who was the first person to drop an atom bomb? And the only yeah. person to drop an atom bomb on a population? Yeah. Keep reading. Arrogance. Yes. Stop right there. She shall be yeah. What's going to come in one day? Three things. Can you have major death in one day? No. You can't have a lot of people die. A lot of people, can't you have a lot of people die in one day? Oh, absolutely, yes. Can you have a lot of mourning in one day? When all those people die, yes. Can you have a famine in one day? Now that not interesting. <laughs> but yes, I guess you can. How can you have a famine in one day? It's all vegetation and it doesn't grow back in those areas. 
What about canned goods? What about canned goods? Yeah. Why can't we? I, I, why? I, I think I need to. <laughs> yeah. Why? I mean, you know, what do we do about the canned goods? Well, they'll be burned. I mean, you know, uh, if they. Metal, metal Let, let's say that they survive. What happens to the food and the canned goods? It's usually safe, but um, I don't think in this kind of uh, economy, even canned goods would survive. And let's say that they did, but when you open them, the radiation would contaminate the food. The food, yes. So but now when you open them, you can. Exactly. So now you have a famine in one day. Keep reading. Verse 9. One hour. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, people. Well, it said one day, but then it, it, it breaks it down. And says one hour. Yeah, and notice, people do not want to get near where this situation is occurring. And notice, there's still people alive. They're not dead. They're afraid to come close. And if you read the rest of it, it says the merchants that were working, were, were networking and buying and selling, they, they don't buy anything from that country anymore. O oh, great city in verse 17. Woe, O oh, great city, 16, dressed in fine linen, purple and scarlet. These are expensive, expensive garments with glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. In one hour, such great wealth has been brought to ruin. Every sea captain and all who travel by ship, the sailors and all who earn their living from the sea will stand afar off when they see the smoke for burning. Was there ever a city like this great city? In one hour, she's been brought to ruin. Most Protestant uh, commentaries believe that this is the United States, is Babylon. What other nation has led the rest of the nations at the end of time? And who has, who has great trade with all the other nations? That's a, um, that's America. This is something I remember when I was a kid, I was sitting on the side of the bed. I don't remember where I got this from, where I heard it at first, but it always just puzzled me. I'm trying to find it now. It's in a, I want to say it's in chapter 17, where it says, and I know you've heard this before, where they said at the end of time there would be uh, hail. Yeah, verse 16, chapter 16. Hail that would be the size of uh, 100 pounds falling from the sky. That's verse. That's chapter 16, verse 21. And it goes right after every, every island fled away and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones of about 100 pounds fell upon men. And they cursed God on account of the plague of the hail. And I used to wonder, how in the world could that happen? I was sitting on the bed. This is back in my Pine Forge days, too, but I was in Detroit. I was sitting on the bed and a National Geographic uh, show came on. And they were talking about what would happen if there was a major nuclear exchange of any sort. And they said that so much dirt and garbage would be thrown into the sky, it would cause the sun to be blacked out from anywhere from a year to 10 years. And they called the condition nuclear winter. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, click, hail, falling that weighs 100 pounds, is easy to envision. So that's what those are the, some of the basic wow. things there, you know, and and, and our uh, that's not the traditional revelation seminar. I talked to a lot of my friends. Not 
Hmm? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. No, I, I want to hear what you're going to say. I mean, you remember when Mount St. Helena blew up in, uh, in, in Washington? Do you remember how dark it was there? And that was just one mountain that blew up and it, bla it blacked out the city. And if you go back and read, look at this, the seals. You know, uh, a lot of my friends that have went to seminary and all this stuff, you know, they're like, Jump. I can't understand it because our church has been a church of prophecy. And I'm like, why is it that we've been so quiet on these things? Part of it is because you've been just teaching what you've always been taught. You're just reciting the Bible, right. you, which is exactly what Catholicism de does in their catechisms. You just recite what you've been taught. You've been proof texting, but you're not thinking through what's being said yeah. here. And I don't mean any harm, but I owe my allegiance to God first before I owe it to any denomination. Look at uh, when you look at these seals. Watch the first seals in chapter uh, <laughs> chapter. Um, I think it's five. The four horsemen. Okay. Yeah, verse five, chapter one. You you know about the four horses, right? Four horsemen in the seventh. The first seal yeah. was open. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. You said this is, this is a chapter five or verse or chapter one. Chapter five. Yeah, and it's verse, okay, uh, okay. no, chapter 6, go to 6, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, chapter 5, chapter 5 is kind of like a picture of God's throne room, and uh, there's some things happening in chapter yeah. 5, but then we get to 6, and the seals start opening. This is where, where uh, John was crying because he couldn't find anybody to open the seal. Who could open the book? And it was the Lamb, Christ. But then it says, I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Look what he says. I heard of the four living. I heard one of the four living creatures say in a loud a voice like thunder, "Come and look!" And there before me was a white horse. Now we've always said this white horse represented the book of represented the first church in Ephesus and all that. And I don't have a big problem with that. Getting away from our first love, but look at the nature of the seal. Without trying to interpret it just deeply, it says the white horse. And what does it say about its rider? Verse two. Stop right there. Wait, 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 stop right there. What was this first rider doing? What did he have? He had a bow. And a crown. And what was he going out to do? Conquer. Right. That, that doesn't sound like a happy time. He went out to fight. Oh, no. Look at the second, yeah. look, at, look at the second horse. Second seal. Sword. 
Mm, stop right there. But the first seal, the first seal with the white horse, there was a fight. The second seal <laughs> with the red horse, he was given power to take peace from the earth and a sword. It was a fight. Another name for fighting in this context is warfare. Look at the third seal. Look at the third horse. Back in those days, when there was warfare, there were certain things they would not destroy. When, when America went into Iraq, they tried not to destroy the oil wells. Well, those oil wells are no different. They're no different than what they were telling them then. Don't destroy the oil. Don't destroy the wine. Three quarters of barley for for a little bit of nothing. You pay a lot of money for a little bit of nothing because it was a the, the world had been upset. That there was a there's warfare going on here. Look at verse. Look at the fourth the fourth horse. Four horses, four horses, four pictures of warfare. Yes. Then it gets to the fifth. Different, different ones. Look at the fifth seal. And they, and they were told to do what? So he, so what happens here in that fifth seal, God's telling them, wait a minute. All those folks that have died. Hold on, y'all. I got this. Don't worry about it. It's almost over. It's near. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the sixth seal where the heavens depart as a scroll and all the skies receding and the, and the stars fall to the earth. So we saw war in the first seal, war in the second seal, war in the third seal, war in the fourth seal. Then there's a, a message of promise. Wait a minute, y'all. Some more people go get killed. And then we get to the sixth seal. Yeah. And people want to say that that's not warfare. Is consistent. It's, it's very consistent. Now here's the mind blower, and then I'm gonna let you go. Verse. Uh, look at chapter. Look at seven. Chapter seven is what you call a. Chapter seven is what you call a. Um, oh man, it's a parenthetical. No, I don't think that's right. Uh -huh. But it's a, it's a, it's like an interlude. Okay, so chapter 7 stops because the seventh seal is not open until after chapter 7. But chapter something happens in chapter 7 here. Look what happens. Read what happens. Go down to, all the way down to verse 4. Start. No. Start. Yeah, 2, 4, 1 through 4. Start at 1 and read to 4. Cried with a loud voice to the four angels, the woman, it was given to her. 
and, and nobody knows what that number really represent except that it's 12 by 12 perfect you know they don't really know who it is some people want to say it's vegetarians you know i love our message in our church but we really are very arrogant in our thinking about some some of these things you know very arrogant just, just think, just the idea that says, well, Christ's not going to come until we finish the work, as though we cannot, we can delay the second coming of Jesus because we're trifling and lazy, you know. But look at this. Four angels, you heard about them before, right? Standing on, okay, that's holding back the winds of strife. Remember, wind is warfare. They're holding back the winds of strife. And then you see another angel come on the scene, but he comes on the scene only after the four angels had been given permission to let go. Then he comes and says, wait a minute. Now, if you go back and look in history, around 1962, there was a little situation that happened worldwide called the Cuban Missile Crisis, when the entire world was looking at nuclear destruction and nuclear war. I had a friend of mine, I didn't know it at the time, he tells me now, he was on one of those ships and they saw the Russian ships coming and President Kennedy had already told them they were going to fire on the Russian ships. And, and Khrushchev still had those ships coming. And they, the world was on the verge of nuclear war. And then suddenly the ships turned around. October, the same time we talk about Judgment Day in October, going back to the Jewish calendar and whatnot. Isn't that interesting that the four angels were told to let it go and then suddenly they stopped. They were told to stop, not yet. They stopped. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just too much here. It's just too much here for me to say. The, the star shower in 1833 was the manifestation of that prophecy. A small star shower in the corner of Northeast America. That is the manifestation of this prophecy. I, I just can't accept that anymore. A great earthquake, the greatest earthquake ever, Lisbon earthquake. How do you know that was the greatest earthquake ever? Who was measuring it? The, the dark day happened in Northeast America also. That's kind of a small local, but see what was happening in those areas, William Miller and, you know, the church was starting up there in those places. So a lot of that stuff was like, okay, we're on the right track. But the Bible clearly says it's going to be sweet in your mouth, but bitter in your belly. Prophesy again. Take another look at this. And this study, we haven't even talked about the trumpets, which we can talk about later, you know, on another Bible study like next week. Yeah. Wow. Something to think. I, yeah, hmm. I want to, yeah, I'm just going to say I want to go back and read these things again and find the things that we're talking about today. Yeah. Because I want Read the trumpets. When you go back and read the trumpets, locusts that look like horses prepared for battle have the faces of men with, with golden hair, women's hair. Go back and look at attack helicopters today with the teeth in there, in there, in there. You know, go back and look at this stuff. It's simple to us today because we live at this time. Right. The time of the end. Then you can go back if you even choose to, and I very rarely do it, but there's a little book called Great Controversy. You might have heard of it. Read, <laughs> read the Time of Trouble chapter. And the author, okay. the author says that she saw balls of fire falling down upon the, nation, the cities of the nation. She also says that at the end of time, the, uh, the, the same power that the death angel had in Egypt would be the power given to the angels at the end of time to use every element of strife. That's, that's time of trouble. And I don't really use a lot of those books to, to verify the Bible, even though everything I, most of what I read, I don't have a problem with, but I just really feel it's important to be able to go to the Bible and, 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 and oh, yeah. you know. Well, I recorded this on video and I'm going to put it on the internet. Um, there's a reason why God just really led me in this direction. But if you go back and you start reading Revelation, you read Daniel, you read Joel, you read Matthew, um, you read Mark. 
it's just too much in these books that point in this direction for me just to be talking about 1833 a star shower. Can't do it. So, well, any other questions or comments? Then we have a word of prayer, and then we'll go eat some uh, ramen noodles. <laughs> Hey, hey, I wish I wish I was joking. I, I wish I was joking. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Some broccoli. So, so any questions or comments? What do you think about that? What we just covered. study you know and then also too yeah. it, it, it would be frightening to most people but it's for me it's like come Lord Jesus hurry up and get this over with you know Absolutely. hurry up Absolutely. that says he comes before this stuff happens. John saw stuff. John saw what, how it's going to yeah. end. And the Bible says, you, you talked about it, Matthew 24, 25. And unless these days be yeah. cut short, no flesh would survive. Right. right. But the, the days have to be cut short, which mm -hmm. means we are going to experience the judgment of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we know that the Personal trouble, we're quick to, uh, you know, 
It's in 2 Peter 3. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But look what it says. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. Yes. Yes. Plain, simple instruction. And then after John wrote Revelation, he wrote the book of John. Because see, I, like, I teach about this. But I really love teaching John and all these other books of the Bible that give you hope and understanding. And all through the book of John, you see Jesus as the son of God and able to keep you through all of this. John went back after this horrible story here and tells us about the power of Jesus. Well, I feel my Roman calling me. I feel my Roman noodles calling me. Okay, well, let's have a word of prayer before we go. Father God, we just thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to share with one another, to take a look at things that we've learned from way back when, giving us an opportunity to see that we haven't followed cunningly devised tales, that you give us wisdom and understanding, and above all of that, you give us peace because we know who controls all of these things. And you, get, you told us this in the very beginning. This is how you prove who you are. You're the only God that's able to tell us in the beginning what's going to happen at the end. And you've clearly shown us here. We just thank you so much. I pray for uh, Nadine and myself and all those that we have an opportunity to share what we learn. And uh, just give us, uh, continue to give us your love and prepare us for what we're dealing with today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Nadine. Hey. Yeah, I am. Uh, now, I know you from Pine Forge, right? Yes. It threw me off because you're in California and I was in Loma Linda. And so I was like, wait a minute, they did not from Loma Linda. See, how'd you get to, uh, how'd you get out to, uh, California? California. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Victorville, Rialto, and all those places. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, my friend. My friend bought a house in Moreno Valley when they first started building out there, but he worked in Los Angeles. That, that, that made. That, Go ahead. It's called the sleeper town. Yeah. It's called the sleeper town because uh, that's where people get their houses in the Moreno Valley and work in LA. Oh, yeah. It's a lot cheaper. Yeah, no. That was too much, too much driving. I said, if I have to do that, I'd rather leave town. I, I came to Texas and saw houses that you could buy, you know, three, 4,000 square feet for $50,000. Wow. So I hastened to Texas. Yeah, hey, double. I, I, I grew up in Detroit, but I was born in New York. In Detroit. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 
And then I went to Pine Forge, which really, which really changed my life and saved my life. Really, it did. Yeah. 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 You remember Sugarfoot? Mark Barnes? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, now I got you placed in my history. I remember now for sure. I'm like, no, Nadine's from Pine Forest. She's not Loma Linda. I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Okay. Well. Oh. Oh yeah. I think I remember that for sure. So, you you were, you and Daryl. Hmm. Daryl. Colbert. No, no, he's from Ohio, Cleveland. Hey, Columbo. We used to call him Columbo. <laughs> Columbo. Yeah, I'm gonna tell him I talk to you. I'm gonna tell him I talk to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, you were in what what class? You were in seventy five, right? Seventy three. Seventy three. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You were, uh, uh, Pratt? Do you ever hear from Pratt? No, I don't know where Pratt is. Um, hadn't heard from him. Who else was my freshman year? You remember Kim Banks? She's down here in Dallas. Uh, who else? I do remember Kim Banks. Yeah. Hey, but see, you seniors just remember you seniors. Jackie Thomas. Yes. Uh, Lizette. <laughs> Tony, yes. Tony Pearson. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah, so. Oh, my yeah, all right. Well, it's good to talk to you, and uh, I'll send you some more information, and uh, we'll get together again next uh, next Friday. Next Friday. I'll take that. Okay. Talk okay. to you later. Good, good talking to you. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Old friend from California. No, excuse me. Pine Forge Academy, where I went to school. You can see, still relationship 25, 30 years later. Mm -hmm.